get started. Thank you for your patience. Uh, very glad today to have Dr. Uh, Silvano uh, Fineski here from uh, INAF, Astrophysical Observatory of uh, Torino in Italy. And Silvano has worked on spectroscopy and polarimetry in the visible and UV wavelength bands for n more than 20 years. And he has applied this remote sensing techniques for the study of solar wind and the corona magnetic field. And he has been involved in many <coughs> missions, as you saw just now. Uh, NASA, ESA, such as uh, SMM, Spartan Soho Solar Orbiter, and also most recently the sounding rocket solar experiments, a score, and also ecl uh, eclipse campaigns. Uh, he's currently the project scientist for MATIS, coronagraph on the ESA Solar Orbiter mission, and also the PI for SCORE. He's the lead scientist for Italian contribution to the formation flying coronagraph on board the ESA probe. Proba 3 mission. Thank you. Well, I didn't realize that you were going to read, a, read it all. I mean, <laughs> but uh, for all uh, those missions, uh, still uh, the mission that uh, the, the more I care uh, about uh, that I will be talking about uh, today uh, still hasn't materialized. And that is understanding the uh, Oops, see if it works. The coronal magnetic field in corona. This is an image, uh, I'm sorry, I have to click. Uh, uh, combine image, this is the same from uh, <coughs> Uh, SOHO. SOHO is the uh, solar and heliospheric observatory that uh, actually was launched almost 20 years ago, and uh, some instruments on board are still uh, working, such as the extreme uh, um, ultraviolet uh, imager telescope, and the one that is no longer uh, working, uh, it's the uh, UV coronal spectrometer, and this is the image of the uh, um, Oxygen 6 uh, 1032 uh, line, and uh, you can see that it's, of course, obvious for all of you uh, observing the corona and the visible that the magnetic field defines the structure of the uh, uh, corona, and this is uh, well uh, uh, um, uh, seen also in uh, uh, the UV. The problem is that even if, of course, the magnetic field defines the uh, uh, topology, the uh, structure, the dynamics, the energetics of the corona, up to date, there are no direct measurements of the corona, of the coronal magnetic field, except for a few uh, measurements, actually, uh, that are starting to be uh, uh, systematically available, thanks to uh, the uh, COMP here at HAO, uh, and then the um, measurements done by uh, Haosheng Lin in uh, uh, with uh, observations of the uh, infrared line, uh, iron 13. And uh, I, so one uh, would ask, why, okay, so uh, you can do that, the measurement of the magnetic field with a visible and infrared. What's the need of going, of using UV uh, emission lines, coronal emission lines, and uh, going to space for that, which is much more complex? complicated uh, and uh, expensive. Well, what I would like to show uh, you all today is that uh, not only it would be extremely useful to have a polarimeter of UV emission lines in corona uh, to uh, diagnose the uh, uh, coronal magnetic field, but even the visible would benefit uh, in uh, going into space. So uh, you all know how uh, the um, magnetic field is derived through the interpretation uh, of uh, polarimetric data of uh, emission line uh, through the uh, Zeeman effect that, uh, in, uh, broadly speaking, gives the information of the magnitude of the field along the line of sight. And then the Allen effect that modifies the, uh, polarize, uh, the, the polarized radiation through scattering uh, processes in the UV uh, permitted lines and the uh, visible and infrared forbidden lines. So the, I will uh, focus my uh, talk 
well, very briefly on uh, the angle effect of the UV permitted lines to, uh, again, stress again. This is a very well known, uh, uh, theoretically, um, very well known uh, um, effect. And uh, it's well understood the physics. Uh, the uh, UV permitted lines are actually easier to understand from uh, an atomic physics point of view because, uh, uh, compared to the forbidden that where you have to take into account uh, a multi-level atomic uh, model, whereas for the UV permitted lines, basically hydrogen-like lines, you can uh, um, uh, work out all the atomic physics with a two-level uh, atomic model. So it's, uh, you actually find uh, uh, analytical so uh, solutions that uh, can be uh, readily, uh, that are easy, uh, that are easier to uh, uh, invert. But another uh, less known uh, application of uh, UV polarimetry of uh, permitted lines is uh, the um, um, interpretation of the modification of the resonance scatter. Uh, <coughs> resonance scattered uh, polarization due not directly to the magnetic field through the angle effect, but due to uh, the um, uh, anisotropy in the velo microscopic velocity distribution of uh, ions in corona. And that is one of the uh, new discoveries of SOHO and uh, particularly of the uh, UVCS, the uh, ultraviolet uh, coronal uh, spectrometer. And how these diagnostics <laughs> can uh, give information on uh, the anisotropy of the velocity distribution, microscopic velocity. So the, uh, um, the uh, anisotropy in the kinetic temperature of the uh, plasma in corona, which is an effect of the uh, coronal magnetic field. Uh, or the perturbation of the uh, coronal magnetic field uh, um, fluctuations. Well, very quickly, I don't probably, you all know the uh, Allen effect. Uh, with uh, 90 degree scattering, you have uh, <coughs> um, uh, a scattering atom that would uh, resonantly scatter radiation coming from one direction uh, with uh, dipole uh, emission uh, that is uh, uh, perpendicular to the direction of uh, the scattering angle. If a magnetic field is uh, aligned to the line of sight, you have a modification of the uh, uh, direction and strength of the uh, polarization. And the sensitivity of this effect to the magnetic field is given uh, uh, its maximum when the Larmor frequency associated to the uh, magnetic field is of the same order of uh, magnitude of the uh, probability of the transition. So the Einstein coefficient for the uh, uh, for the uh, um, for the um, transition. Now. Uh, in uh, general terms, one says that the angle effect reduces the amplitude of the line uh, scattering polarization and rotates the direction. This is not completely true, but just to remember, you know, the main effect depends on the geometry. There are uh, uh, geometrical uh, uh, configurations where actually the angle effect increases the degree of polarization. But the clear signature of the angle effect is the rotation with respect to the a zero field case, which uh, it's uh, known. So this is really the signature one wants to look at. And so I will uh, focus on this. Uh, in case, of course, of the uh, uh, visible infrared forbidden lines, the Larmor frequency, uh, I mean, the uh, Einstein coefficient for the mm, <coughs> magnetic dipole forbidden lines transition is so small that you are in a regime of so-called saturated angle effect, and uh, the uh, polarization vector is either parallel or perpendicular to the uh, um, uh, magnetic field vector. Good. It's, it's uh, still a very important information. That's another point, because in a way, 
the information uh, uh, coming from uh, the saturated LFET is complementary to the one coming from the uh, non-saturated LFET in the uh, UV lines. So the uh, questions are, well, can we see it in the UV? I mean, uh, uh, is there, uh, um, in corona, is expected to, uh, to have uh, coronal magnetic fields of the order of magnitude uh, that is sensitive to the UV um, uh, coronal lines? And uh, it's, uh, you know, not only theoretically, but also practically observable. Well, uh, again, the key point is that the Einstein coefficient for the uh, 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 spontaneous transition has to be of the same order of magnitude of the Larmor frequency. So this is the uh, relationship when you take out all the, uh, um, all the um, uh, uh, dimensional factors. And uh, in fact, you see a series of lines, hydrogen-like lines, so the uh, Lyman series and the oxygen six, uh, and uh, they are sensitive to fields a little bit higher, we'll see though, uh, than you would expect in the extended corona. When I talk about corona, I talk about off-limb corona beyond 1.3 uh, solar radii heliocentric heights, 1.3, 1.2. But still, you can find uh, uh, some of these um, uh, uh, magnetic field strengths in active regions. In fact, the uh, Haosheng link uh, observation with the Zeman effect uh, in uh, the Iron 13 line, he found that 1.3 solar radii uh, uh, magnetic field of the order of 30 Gauss. So, so uh, it's, you know, um, possible diagnostics for active regions. The, um, well, of course, uh, if one does some modeling, one, uh, this is a model uh, that with Adrian Van Balegoyen uh, we uh, did some time ago by, uh, you know, extrapolating a uh, field, uh, 1.2 uh, solar radii. And again, as I said, uh, the, um, uh, unique signature of the L effect is the rotation of the polarization vector. And here you see for uh, um, the Lyman gamma the uh, type of rotations in degree uh, at different heights for uh, uh, this type of uh, uh, magnetic field. So we are talking about really t 10 degree uh, angular rotation. Can you see this? Of course, so if you have enough photons, so the uh, minimum detectable polarization depends on, uh, you know, how many photons. So the minimum detectable uh, angle of rotation depends on the strength of the uh, polarization vector and the error that you <coughs> uh, have in uh, measuring it. So if you uh, and this is directly related to the uh, signal to noise, of course. Uh, larger is the signal to noise, and smaller the, uh, is the error you commit in uh, uh, measuring the polarization. So if you, of course, the line is not just, uh, um, doesn't just have a, a radiative component, but also a collision component that is not polarized, so it creates a background of unpolarized noise, let's say. So uh, if you throw in uh, the rotation uh, that you would expect uh, uh, with uh, uh, that field and that line, you finally uh, get uh, an estimation of the minimum detectable field strength for a given uh, signal to noise, for a given line, so the Einstein coefficient for that line, and uh, for the given proportion of collision and radiative uh, component of that line, and for the uh, uh, zero field polarization. This is just uh, depending on uh, the height. The higher um, is the scattering volume from the uh, surface, the more polarized is the uh, resonantly scattered uh, radiation, simply because the sun looks more 
point like so you are approaching the you know uh, ideal situation of uh, perfectly uh, an isotropic uh, illuminating source so if you throw all these numbers so if you take what you know of what is known of the uh, current uh, what is known of the current magnetic field strength from extrapolations, uh, radio measurements, uh, model-dependent radio measurements, etc. Uh, we have those lines, hydrogen-like uh, uh, lines, the uh, Lyman uh, series, the oxygen-6, and uh, we know what's for different uh, height and uh, electron density model, what's the uh, <coughs> uh, co uh, the, the, the relative um, Radiative and collisional component. For instance, for the Lyman alpha, the collision is, is zero in in, uh, in corona. So, uh, of course, the smaller is the uh, collisional component, the smaller will be the uh, minimum uh, corona magnetic field that you can measure. And uh, it, the other thing is that the the the, the real conundrum here of these UV uh, <coughs> coron lines is that you know the stronger is the uh, uh, intensity of the line, so the Einstein coefficient, and uh, less and, and the um, and, and uh, higher is the uh, minimum uh, magnetic field to which they are sensitive to through the Allen effect. But now you have also a stronger signal to noise, so it's a balance between these two uh, parameters. So a stronger line is sensitive to uh, stronger fields that of the type that is less likely to find in corona. But you can uh, build up enough signal to noise to maybe even detect small, uh, small rotation in the polarization vector. In fact, this is shown here. OK, what I'm showing here is um, you know, best knowledge to date of, through extrapolations, measurements in, uh, in uh, uh, radio, uh, measurements through um, uh, uh, radio and uh, shock uh, measurements. The, uh, what you would expect is the uh, trend of the coronal magnetic field strength as a function of heliocentric distance from the sun. And these lines, uh, is the uh, minimum uh, uh, magnetic field to which these lines may be sensitive. So, for instance, the uh, Lyman, uh, Lyman gamma is sensitive to very uh, relatively small uh, uh, magnetic fields of the order of one gauss. But really, you can start using it higher up because down below you have a strong collisional component. Basically, doesn't give. It, um, but basically, uh, uh, increases the minimum detectable uh, magnetic field that you can uh, um, that you can measure. Uh, for the Lyman beta, you are sensitive to somewhat stronger fields, but now the collisional component is less intense, so you can go below down. The Lyman alpha, which is the actually the more intense, and so the one that is sensitive to uh, larger magnetic fields, actually you can observe very close down to the limb because the, there is no uh, no collision component. It's all rad uh, uh, radiative, and so is uh, in a way sensitive to sure stronger magnetic fields, but you can. Uh, uh, go very close to the limb and be sensitive so to stronger magnetic fields. So in a way they kind of, you see, map the trend of the magnetic field. The oxygen-6 is uh, sensitive to uh, it's something in between really the Lyman alpha and, uh, um, and the Lyman beta because of the collision component. So this is uh, to advocate a multi-line, multi-wavelength uh, spectral polarimeter 
in space that could, in principle, at different wavelengths, map the uh, magnetic field at different heights. And again, this is the non-saturated angle effect. So this effect is sensitive to the strength of the field and to the component along the line of sight, which is uh, complementary to the saturated angle effect, the linear polarization uh, in the saturated angle effect for the uh, infrared and visible light line, which is sensitive to the uh, projected component of the field on the plane of the sun. Okay, this is simply. And uh, well, these are just uh, uh, examples, modelings. So this is the zero field case. So all the polarization should be tangent. If mm, with a simple uh, modeling you, um, of a magnetic field, this is Banaszkiewicz, you start seeing, so these are the um, rotation, this is the angle of rotation from the zero field case. So this is one degree or so from the tangential position, okay? So it's a small number, but again, since you have so much, it's so much intense, the uh, line, uh, you can have enough statistics. We are talking about, uh, you know, 10 of the, uh, 10 of the five, 10 of the uh, six photons. So you need to have a sensitivity of 100, uh, a few hundreds, which is not, so, say something between 10 and the minus, if you want to put it in another way, 10 and the minus in terms of uh, polarization sensitivity, 10 and the minus 2, 10 and the minus 3, which is still way uh, larger than uh, the sensitivity usually required, for instance, for the uh, uh, circular polarization in, uh, in infrared lines. And the other thing is that the angle effect doesn't change sign across the uh, line profile. So you, can, you don't really need a, a spectrometer, but just a filter graph to uh, image the entire uh, line. And uh, the other thing interesting is that if you put the wind, the polarization changes. And that's because, I'll show you, and that's uh, an interesting clue. I mean, uh, now the polarization uh, of this uh, resonantly scattered UV line is sensitive not only to the uh, magnetic field, but also to the uh, dynamics of the corona, namely the uh, solar wind. So this is the bulk velocity. I show you that it is also sensitive to the microscopic velocity distribution. So maybe I'll show you this. So let me step back one uh, uh, one minute and uh, just recap very briefly the um, you know the, one of the major um, discoveries of uh, Soho, namely the um, fact that in the extended corona, the uh, oxygen the um, UV lines that in the chromosphere are relatively narrow, one of three millions, when observed in uh, uh, corona, they have a, a, a profile that corresponds to 200 million K. This is kinetic temperature, okay? So these are uh, oxygen five plus uh, ions. So this is the same oxygen 5 plus ion in chromosphere illuminating the oxygen 5 plus in corona that resonantly scatters this um, radiation. The same occurs for the Lyman uh, alpha. So the observation from the uh, UVCS show that the uh, uh, Velocity distribution on the line of sight was pretty broad. But what about the distribution? So the first uh, idea was, oh, wow, it's so hot there. Again, these are kinetic temperature. So but uh, we only see the uh, distribution uh, perpendicular, broadly speaking, to the magnetic field, right? 
So what's the distribution along the magnetic field? How can spectroscopy uh, um, measure that? Well, the thing is that, as I said, the um, emission line from the chromosphere resonant, uh, is resonantly scattered. The photon coming from the chromosphere is, re is resonantly scattered from the oxygen 5 plus ion. And uh, the, this is the case for the Lyman alpha. So you have the uh, chromospheric profile, OK? But then you have the also uh, the velocity, microscopic velocity distribution of the scattering ion in corona. And of course, in uh, the frame of reference of the scattering atom, if the, uh, uh, the, the, the scattering atom is, is uh, at rest with respect to the chromosphere, the two lines will resonate. Okay, and so here you have the maximum intensity. But then, uh, if the um, because of the uh, solar wind, the scattering atom is flying away from uh, the exciting source, it will see the exciting source redder. And so it will go out of resonance. So the intensity will drop. So this is the Doppler dimming. Here is the case. Actually, you can have uh, even uh, a pumping. So this is the oxygen 6. So this is the uh, um, coronal, the larger one, the coronal velocity distribution in corona. And this is the uh, profile, you remember the very narrow profile in chromosphere of the oxygen 6 with two carbon 2 lines in chromosphere. As you, as the oxygen 5 plus ion starts to fly away from uh, the chromosphere, it goes out of uh, resonance with the um, chromospheric pumping source. So it gets redder. And so the intensity drops. The interesting thing is that when uh, then uh, the um, <coughs> ion is flying so fast that starts to uh, see the carbon-2 lines being redder and being uh, uh, resonance with uh, uh, the uh, uh, wavelength in the rest frame of the uh, coronal ion. And so you, you have actually a small pumping. Then again, a dimming. And then, again, a pumping. So now, you can see that from this uh, mechanism, you can derive two things. One, the uh, outflow velocity. of the uh, scattering ion, depending on the intensity. But the other inter interesting thing is that you have a sort of gauge of the width of this line, depending on where the uh, pumping occurs. So for instance, if this line were very broad, you wouldn't see this dip. You would see just the dimming a broader dimming. And that's exact. And uh, the thing that uh, this dip has been observed, OK, tells you, OK, this is the velocity distribution now along the magnetic field, OK? Because the ion is flying following the magnetic field line. So this technique gives you the, uh, the idea of the width of the um, coronal velocity distribution along the magnetic field. So the direct observation of the uh, uh, line profile gives you the velocity distribution perpendicular to the field. This technique gives you the uh, width of the velocity distribution parallel to the field. And the fact that uh, this dip was observed actually uh, uh, said that the uh, width of the velocity distribution parallel, so the parallel temperature of these ions is much smaller than the uh, perpendicular temperature. So there is an, anis uh, an anisotropy, 
as you move out between the uh, uh, perpendicular temperature and the parallel temperature. So these are kinetic temperatures. So you have like um, 400, uh, the order of 400 million degrees for the uh, perpendicular temperature and much less a few million for the parallel. This effect is still there in the Lyman alpha even if the difference is smaller. So the big discovery is this anisotropy and uh, the fact that this is uh, uh, more than uh, um, a mass to charge proportion, is, is larger than a charge uh, proportional. So the explanation that was given is that your emitting ion oscillates follows the oscillations of the magnetic field and so the uh, velocity distribution perpendicular to the field is broader than the one along the field. And uh, this uh, is uh, basically an isotropic, uh, is ion cyclotron resonance between the alpha waves and the larmor gyration of the ions that creates this anisotropy. And uh, it's not surprising that you uh, it's larger in uh, charged ions than in uh, um, neutral uh, hydrogen, which is in uh, really th through charge transfer is in contact with the protons, but they are uh, uh, lighter and so they, they have a smaller um, uh, gyro frequency. So, okay, uh, sorry for this tutorial, but what all these, I mean, this anisotropic velocity distribution has to do with polarization. Well, let's see. Uh, let's suppose in this cartoon, I hope to explain this uh, concept. Okay, so you have your scattering atom that is not uh, that is uh, at rest, no wind, with respect to the um, solar uh, surface, the photosphere. So you will have uh, uh, one. Uh, uh, chromospheric ray coming from one side of the limb and uh, suppose that you only that this atom is only illuminated from this side of the limb so the two um, profiles the coronal and chromospheric are uh, resonant and so the scattering uh, polarization will be perpendicular to the incoming radiation okay the same will occur for the uh, ray coming from the opposite direction. So it will be uh, perpendicular to this direction. So now this atom is really illuminated by uh, a solid angle. And so if you just take the uh, uh, vector sum of all these vectors, you will have the regular, you know, uh, resonantly scattered polarization tangent to the limb. But now, let's suppose that the uh, uh, atom is flying uh, with a given angle, is not radially flying away from the sun, but let's say with a, a super radial angle, okay? So what happens? That this ray will be dim, and this ray will not be dim. So if you take the average, if you do all the calculation with the solid angle, the dilution factor, and all that, what happens is that, you know, since this is dim, this vector will be smaller than this one. When you take the sum, you will have a rotation. Here we are not talking about an effect. Magnetic field is an effect due simply to the uh, known radial outflow velocity that introduces this uh, imbalance in the Doppler dimming. This was, was first noted by Sal Brashaw in uh, 92, 90, in the early 90s. The problem with this mechanism is that the difference between these two, if, if you assume an isotropic velocity distribution in corona, the effect is so small that this rotation is really small. B 
But if you now have a strong anisotropy, so if the uh, velocity disappearing corona were um, isotropic, sure, from a mathematical point of view, you go through all the, you know, the, the, the uh, all effect uh, mm, uh, theory and all that, you find a rotation that it's of the order of, you know, fraction of degrees. Because, the, again, this is a situation where I have the two extreme rays. You have to imagine that, of course, all the other rays uh, seen under uh, the solid angle coming from the, uh, uh, from the um, chromosphere seen uh, uh, under the solid angle of the scattering atom, they contribute and they dilute the effect. But now, if you have a strong anisotropy, okay, between, so we said that we, uh, with uh, UBCS has been observed a very large uh, perpendicular velocity distribution because the uh, ions are, um, ions, they are um, uh, gyrating around the uh, magnetic field that is oscillating transversely to the line of sight, and so broadening the uh, velocity distribution, as opposed to the outflow velocity, which is, um, and the uh, velocity in the pa parallel uh, to the magnetic field, which is much less uh, broadened because of the, uh, and, and we know this from the uh, Doppler dimming and Doppler pumping. So what happens is, okay, so this atom is oscillating like that around the magnetic field, Okay, and so the, uh, the ion coming from here sees a very broad velocity distribution, right? So when you um, convolve the uh, uh, chromospheric profile with the coronal profile, you have, because of this broadening, a relatively small intensity. As opposed to here, now the uh, velocity distribution along the line of, uh, along the magnetic field is much narrower. So you have a very good uh, resonance. And so the in scattered polarization is much stronger. So now when you take the vector sum between these, uh, sum between these two uh, uh, vectors, you have a tilt. And notice, now it's much larger because of this anisotropy. Of course, then, so you have a rotation in this way. Now, imagine that now this uh, ion is flying along the magnetic field. So it's oscillating like this and flying away. So now you go out of uh, resonance with even, and very soon, because the um, Velocity distribution along the, line of the, along the magnetic field is very narrow. So again, this drops the intensity of the, uh, uh, of the uh, polarized radiation uh, generated by this rate drops down compared to this. And so you have a rotation on the other side. So and again, I'm not talking about an effect. I'm not talking about magnetic field. So here we have uh, the rotation of the linear polarization of uh, permitted UV lines is an interesting, in my opinion, uh, diagnostics for the uh, anisotropy uh, distribution of the um, uh, coronal ions that reflect, by the way, depend, uh, indirectly the uh, motions of the magnetic field. So ultimately is still a diagnostics of what the magnetic field is doing, and also a diagnostics of the uh, uh, solar wind. Well, we have done some, okay, yes. A what? A That's a very good question. That, that's, in fact, uh, one, one interesting thing. So we have done uh, uh, some modeling. 
And uh, okay, the first question to answer your question, the, I mean, the first answer to, uh, uh, is that, um, well, actually, the, the first question to address your, uh, your question is, uh, how do the Unle effect that, again, has as a unique signature this rotation uh, confuses or makes an ambiguous the, uh, this other rotation? Well, the, the good thing is that in order to have the, uh, to detect the Unle effect, really, the Unle effect is sensitive to, uh, we think, to magnetic fields that most likely, uh, you know, uh, are, uh, you can find close to the limb, 1.5, 1.6. So you see a rotation in the UV uh, polarization th uh, because of the Unle effect, presumably only um, close to the limb because only there you have fields with strong enough to, um, to be uh, sense uh, to which the Unle effect is sensitive. So let's say the Unle effect, broadly speaking, is uh, if you see a signature, now I'm really, uh, of course there are um, gray areas, but just broadly speaking, if you see a rotation in the polarization vector, deep down, deep down, I mean close down to the limb, most likely is the magnetic field uh, inducing this uh, rotation through the Unle effect. Now, why you don't see what the same, why presumably you don't see the same rotation close to the limb uh, due to these other um, uh, mechanisms? Well, because you need to have a relatively strong wind. And the wind picks up higher up, like 1.8 or so. So there are two, say, okay, this is a, a measurement done with UVCS and LASCO. In this line, there is, um, I mean, the Doppler dimming and pumping technique, if you take the ratio, there are two oxygen-6 lines, 1032, 1037. I don't go in the details, but if you take the ratio, they are, they are sensitive in a different way to the Doppler dimming. If you take the ratio of the two lines, the, there is a speed, uh, 100 kilometers per second, that the ratio has, uh, I forgot, it's like, it's between uh, one, and a half, one and two. One, I think 1.6. Anyway, there is a precise value of the ratio that is model independent. And if you see that ratio, that value in the ratio of the two lines, that means that the speed is 100 kilometers per second. So then uh, for all the other velocities, you have to do some modeling, uh, use the uh, electron density, blah, blah, blah. But for uh, this um, velocity, uh, the, the, the um, Electron density dependence, uh, ion, ba ion balance, or is the same uh, line. Uh, all that drops out and uh, is model independent. So here we are um, uh, seeing, you know, the where the uh, wind starts um, being fast. So below this line in a streamer is less than uh, 100 kilometers per second. Beyond this line is larger than. Um, 100 kilometers per second. So here you see that basically the, you have the source of the fast solar wind. This is, the, uh, this is almost one solar radii above the, the surface. This is LASCO. So this is the occulting disk, and this is the actual uh, uh, solar limb. But then as you uh, go uh, uh, in, uh, in the equatorial sheets, you have the closed magnetic field lines with almost no wind except for the interface region, where probably, where most likely uh, the uh, slow solar wind is coming from. So this region, so you see that, basic, again, broadly speaking, below this line, the magnetic field is strong enough that the Unle effect of these UV lines uh, can be observed. As you move out, be, beyond 1.7, 1.8, the magnetic field drops like a stone and the Unle effect is no longer, for these UV lines, no longer sensitive to these uh, UV, uh, to these magnetic fields. But the wind starts to pick up and uh, a very non-radial wind, think about it here, 
I mean, this is, this is radial, but now here you have wind that follows the uh, that follows the um, highly uh, super radial uh, streamer corona interface. So in this region, the unle effect, I mean, the, 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 polariz the polarization, the resonance scatter polarization is no longer sensitive to the unle effect, but to this other effect. So there are two separate regions, broadly. Of course, as usual, there will be some uh, uh, superposition here, depending on, you know, if you have active regions or maybe um, uh, uh, it depends, but the other point is that it gives you also an idea of the topology of the magnetic field because, of course, the um, outflow follows uh, the uh, magnetic field lines. So, just to give you an example of uh, okay, this is the case of the uh, degree of super radiality. So for instance, uh, this line, D is very super radial, and of course, A, it is not. Okay, this is what you would expect in terms of rotation due to this uh, uh, super radial Doppler dimming if the um, velocity distribution of the scattering atoms were uh, isotropic. So you have very little rotation like, in fact, it was observed with the Halbershaw model. As soon as you assume this type of uh, uh, anisotropy that was observed by, so these are measurements, okay? Uh, these are not model. This is a model, these are measurements. So but if you put this um, anisotropy in the model, now you have a very strong rotation. Again, this is the rotation of the, the, uh, of the um, polarization vector with respect to the tangent direction to the limb, which is the zero field, zero um, wind uh, uh, situation. Now, now you have a very strong rotation, strong in terms of, uh, you know, 10 uh, or so degrees. And that's, so if you see the rotation, this rotation, of course, is stronger, you see where you have more super radial uh, non-radial uh, outflow velocity. In, um, in other words, this is a powerful uh, technique to measure the uh, anisotropy of the, uh, velo of the velocity distribution in corona and also the uh, uh, kinetic temperature. And so, but why do we care about this? Well, because uh, this anisotropy was observed by, uh, for instance, uh, in situ observation with Helios at 0.3 uh, astronomical units. And so uh, it was thought that the deposition of energy, acceleration of the wind, uh, was directly observed only down to 0.3 uh, astronomical units. Here we see it at that uh, the acceleration and uh, through this uh, ion cyclotron resonance occurs very close down to the limb, just a few tenths of solar radii already. The other fact is that, uh, for instance, has been questioned, okay, well, yes, that's very nice, but who, who's telling you that um, this broadening of the lines observed along the line of sight is uh, really, uh, I mean, what you're really observing is the microscopic velocity distribution. Maybe it can be a bulk velocity away, I mean, towards you and away from you. Basically, yours, uh, it was questioned. Maybe what we are just observing is the, uh, you know, outflow velocity uh, of the uh, plasma that broadens the line simply because of a Doppler effect. So um, uh, material coming towards you is uh, blue shift and red shift, and so that's the broadening. And uh, uh, since the, uh, um, and so the information of the, uh, on the uh, uh, distribution of the, um, Velocity distribution along the line, along the uh, magnetic field is, you know, 
way indirect through the Doppler dimming. So it was questioned. The thing is that if you think about this uh, effect, okay, still depends on the Doppler dimming. But also on, uh, you see, the uh, effect of the Doppler dimming combined to the anisotropy is different by, uh, is different from uh, uh, just the anisotropy. So you, you need to have the anisotropy. Well, if you just have the anisotropy with no wind, you have, you, ex you expect a certain rotation. If you have also the wind, you expect a rotation in a different side. So the question is, well, uh, uh, what happens to the integration along the nerves? Okay, so let's assume that uh, one case in which your uh, emitters are too, all, all concentrated on the plane of the sun, okay? And so this broadening is really due to what you're observing is really the uh, broadening due to the microscopic velocity distribution. Or let's assume another case, the case in which everything is anisotropic, the, mi the microscopic velocity distribution, but now you have a very shallow along the line of sight uh, density distribution that would, with a wind, that would explain, uh, you know, the, the broadening. And let's use these two models to see what would be the uh, effect. And the fact is that you don't see any difference in the sense that in order to have, so in one case, uh, let's see. Yes. The two electron density models are, so both are anisotropic, okay, anisotropic uh, temperatures. In one case, you have uh, a peak uh, density distribution on the plane of the sky. And in the other case, you have a shallow distribution along the line of sight. And uh, you see no difference. I mean, which means that, I mean, you would see a difference if you do not have an anisotropic velocity distribution. This means that the polarization is relatively insensitive to the model. Because if you think about it, it maps mostly the uh, plane of the sky emission. So the point here is that if you see a rotation, okay, regardless of the model, electron density model that you put in your analysis to uh, uh, interpret the integration along the line of sight, if you see a rotation in the polarization vector, that's only due to uh, uh, an, an isotropy in the velocity distribution, not in uh, this uh, modeling or this uh, different uh, um, uh, density distribution along the line of sight. So it's, if you wish, it's a, an additional uh, model independent diagnosis of this uh, uh, ion cyclotron uh, uh, mechanism that it's one of the candidates for the acceleration of the solar wind and uh, the heating of the corona. And again, uh, this is an indirect diagnosis of the effect, not of the magnetic field, but of the effects of the magnetic field on the plasma. Acceleration, an isotropy distribution, and uh, uh, energy deposition. The anisotropy is a, a sign of the energy deposition of the magnetic field through this uh, reson ion cyclotron resonance uh, of the uh, magnetic field energy deposited on the uh, coronal field. I don't know if there are questions. I probably, no, okay, it's one hour. So this is the uh, concept. Well, of course, everybody can say, well, this is all nice theory. Has this been observed? No have been observed, there is only one single observation of uh, the polarization of uh, UV uh, permitted lines done by Sumer during a roll. Uh, so Sumer is, was not designed for uh, uh, polarimetric measurements. 
um, still uh, one of these um, mirror at grazing incidence that is used to scan the uh, slit image on the grating uh, introduces some linear polarization by it's close to the Brewster angle. And during a roll maneuver of the Soho spacecraft, so uh, it was possible to use this uh, scanning mirror as a, a linear analyzer. And the um, result uh, obtained by uh, Nureddin Rafi is a polarization of this order with this sort of rotation angle. This is the rotation of the polarization vector from the expected zero case, zero field case tangent to the limb. So it's rotated by uh, nine degrees, and this is one sigma. So it's barely. But the interesting thing is that uh, when uh, with Nureddin we did the uh, uh, analysis, actually he did it first just taking into account the angle effect. So in order to see this sort of rotation, you need to have at 1.3 solar radii, 10 gauss, uh, 50 kilometers per second wind, and uh, uh, a relatively large inclination of the field. I mean, yes. And this type of uh, field in a coronal hole at that height, uh, it's really kind of too high. But if you now take into account, OK, this is a value that was measured thanks to that uh, line uh, ratio, Doppler dimming, oxygen-6 technique I was telling you about. So this is a measurement combined with this measurement. If you now assume you know, a tilt, a non-superradial, uh, sorry, a superradial uh, magnetic field here, like you know, larger than 30 degrees, now you, you don't need I mean, now the rotation, you can attribute the, the rotation of this super radial Doppler dimming effect and not to the L effect. So you do not require such a strong field, magnetic field, to observe this rotation because you can attribute that to the super radial uh, Doppler dimming effect. Again, this is one data point, but just to tell you, actually, this is you know, the type of uh, answer to your question, namely that you, know, you can um, assume, I mean, in order to uh, explain this rotation, you need to have a relatively strong field in a coronal hole of this height, unless you assume some uh, anisotropic velocity distribution that, that was measured again, uh, I think. Here it is. Uh, no. The uh, anisotropic velocity distribution and, uh, and with a, a relatively large inclination of the field. Well, 30 degrees is not not that bad. I mean, uh, again, even in uh, simple models, this is not 30 degrees, but still, of course, this is a model. So it's not uh, the, the, the point here we wanted to show with Nureddin was that, again, uh, you could have two agents playing in uh, this uh, um, modification of the polarization, linear polarization in uh, these UV lines. So, and here I come with uh, why you guys should care about all this. Well, because, again, what uh, John said, ask was, well, how can you disentangle the two things? Well, the more, the merrier. Meaning that, uh, of course, uh, would be extremely important to have also independent measurements through uh, visible light and infrared lines of the other components of the magnetic field, the uh, line of sight with the Zeman and the, uh, uh, in, the uh, inclination of the field on the uh, plane of the sky. So, um, you know, this idea of combining in space a visible uh, 
uh, infrared uh, coronagraph with a UV coronagraph dates from uh, the advanced uh, solar coronal explorer and uh, uh, that was proposed to NASA with um, Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory and uh, Naval Research Lab. And here you see the uh, boom with the occulter uh, that um, far away from the entrance pupil of the telescope to increase as much as possible the uh, collecting uh, area because of the importance of having a large uh, number of photons for the polarimetric measurement. So the, the, like you all know, the polarization measurements are photon starved. So the, one of the drivers of this boom is precisely that uh, uh, estimate that I uh, told you uh, before of at least you know the order of uh, 10,000 uh, to a million photons per per polarization measurements per uh, rotation of the analyzer linear analyzer then of course there's been a response in 2007 of uh, NEM mission this is a, even a formation flying 150 meters away again photon starvation we tried again with Solmex, photon uh, starvation uh, again here with uh, uh, formation flying. Then uh, we uh, gave up with um, emissions, and so now we have uh, proposed another mission. I uh, didn't have time to put it, but uh, this was proposed last year for a small mission, not formation flying but trying to uh, boost the uh, photon uh, throughput with um, a nested coronagraph. So instead of having one mirror occulted, you have many mirrors, one on top of the other, with occulted in order to uh, increase without uh, having a, a long boom or a, an occulter far away. You have an occulter close, but you have many occulter. So it's like a Venetian blind type of opening where uh, you know each uh, sector of the mirror is in the shadow of the Venetian blind. And then you have another. So it's like a nested coronagraph. You have many coronagraphs, one on top of the other. Anyway, the point is that there are ideas out there on uh, how to uh, fit in uh, whatever is available this type of mission. In fact, just uh, uh, this year, uh, uh, Naval Research Lab uh, with HAO and uh, uh, the scientific collaboration of um, Italy, so not providing um, hardware, uh, submitted a proposal for a balloon that was well received uh, with a maximum uh, 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 score. And again, I'm not saying this to uh, uh, brag about this, but because uh, the only reason why it was not uh, funded is because of lack of fundings. Uh, this time, this, this year round. But the point is that is you know, really, I don't know, it's 12 years that more than we are uh, advocating this, and hopefully, uh, you know, finally, we'll, there is some breakthrough, well, at least for this balloon. And this balloon proposal only had, of course, the visible and infrared. But the point is that why, well, if you have beautiful comp and maybe, uh, no, maybe for sure, Cosmo in the near future, or, or uh, deepest, uh, you want to go to space. Again, because you have, uh, uh, with the same aperture, much more invisible and infrared, much more uh, throughput, because you bypass the uh, atmosphere and also polarimetric precision and sensitivity. And uh, I think that I stop here with this slide uh, where I summarize uh, the, the synergies, again, between uh, the uh, UV polarimetry and the visible and infrared polarimetry for uh, diagnosing the uh, coronal magnetic field. Thank you. So when out, well, the, the last 15 minutes were more advertising was no real science. <laughs> Stars, anyway.
Discrimination of Kramer, uh, where you're saying that, uh, you know, depending, I mean, regardless of how the density distribution of the corona is, whether it is peaked on the plane of the sky. So you, do, you don't see a change in rotation, but I, I would expect that the, you know, the signal will be different. I mean, the rotation is something that is relative, but so can one make uh, some uh, yes, density yes. distribution assumption based on Absol the Absolutely, the but <laughs> absolutely. It, the uh, intensity changes. Uh, the point is that um, uh, here we wanted to show the fact that uh, even without radiometry, accurate radiometry, but again, using uh, the uh, uh, dimensional number of u over q, the rotation of the angle, you are sensitive only to this anisotropy and not to the model. Because you can always say, well, Okay, you see more intensity because I don't know, because of your model. Uh, I mean, you can have more intensity just because you have more electron electrons on the plane of the sun. And here, I mean, the total column density of the uh, of the electrons is the same than here, only that this is uh, broadened. I mean, distributed more distributed along the line of sight here is big but they but let's say the total number of electrons is the same and so you see the same intensity so it's again model dependence etc the thing is that here spectroscopy cannot distinguish between these two cases okay the two cases where I mean uh, e e spectroscopy can uh, tell you either you have a uh, uh, density distribution of your emitter peaked on the plane of the sky and uh, uh, an isotropic or you can have an uh, isotropic velocity distribution on a more shallower density distribution on the other side and the broadening and you will see the same uh, spectroscopic effect the broadening on the line one case is microscopic velocity distribution. In the other case, is Doppler effect of um, plasma flying towards you and away from you. Here, with the polarimetry, on the contrary, uh, you see this rotation only if you have a strong anisotropy uh, distribution, no matter of what is your electron density model. Well, Uh, this was a plot for convincing uh, review panels, not scientists that would like to have more, uh, you know, uh, information uh, to then uh, constrain the, um, the, the the model. No. It, <laughs> the interesting thing is that uh, a weaker. Uh, another question is. Can you see it in uh, uh, this effect in uh, uh, visible and infrared lines? The thing is that uh, um, now it's weaker, but it should be there. I haven't done uh, the calculations because now uh, for visible and infrared lines, uh, you do not have an exciting as an excitation. Uh, Now the uh, exciting radi So for the UV, I'm oh, sorry, for the infrared and visible lines, the uh, uh, incident radiation has a flat spectrum, right? So you do not have this, okay? But you can have this. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I mean, imagine now that the uh, red is the incident radiation is flat, and the green is also flat. Now, if you convolve this flat with a narrow and a broad, you will have a slightly, a, sl a small difference again. So, uh, a rotation. But really, I haven't gone through the number. Would be interesting to see if uh, you can see this anisotropy showing up in this, but probably there you will have the uh, saturated effect 
that really, I mean, there, here, for the UV, roughly speaking, you have two regimes, two um, regions close to the sun is the uh, effect that dominates. Uh, um, beyond two solar radii, the field is so uh, weak that the angle effect, uh, that the, uh, these lines are no longer sensitive to the angle effect. But they are sensitive to this uh, super radial Doppler dimming effect. For visible or infrared lines, you have the uh, saturated angle effect all over the place. So it gets more difficult. I haven't done the, uh, would be interesting to see. I think that Nureddin uh, was, uh, we, we discussed about this with Nureddin that he was looking to this, right? No more questions? Well, let's thank Savano again. Thank you.